Hey there, so you've probably heard a million things about the Sony A93 by now, so I'm not going to cover every single spec in this video. There is, however, one thing that no one's talking about that's more important than any single one specification in this new camera. I'll get to that in a second, but first, let me just set the scene for you a little bit. So this new camera has a base ISO of 250, which is a bit higher than some of the other Sony cameras. So does that mean that the A93 is not as sensitive in low light? situations. Well Andrew Reed from EOSHD.com says the A93 is a bit of a step back. At ISO 8000 and 12800 we begin to see quite a bit more noise than the rolling shutter 24 megapixel sensor in the A9 and A92. So does that mean that when we're shooting video with the A93 that we're going to get more noise? Andrew goes on to say that I put the loss of low light performance about one stop maybe two which is not insignificant. The Sony A9 3 also doesn't seem to be a dual base ISO sensor like we have in something like the FX3 or the Sony A7S3. So why does the A93 have a higher base ISO and also a smaller dynamic range? I think the biggest factor could be that global shutter sensor and that's because the nature of a global shutter sensor means that it needs to read out all of the data from that sensor in one instant rather than in a non-global shutter sensor which has to read out each line and that's the thing that causes rolling shutter in non-global sensor cameras. Because it has to read out all of that data in one go, it means there's probably a lot more electronics on the sensor itself to be able to do this. Because there's more built into the sensor, it might mean that there's less space for gathering of light, which in turn might mean that there's less usable dynamic range than in something like an FX3 or A7S3. However, the A93 does do oversampled 4K, so it's taking that 6K sensor data and sampling it down into 4K, which may help to reduce some of the noise when compared to an FX3, for example. Also, another thing to consider is because there's more electronics on the chip, does that mean that the A93 is gonna potentially suffer with overheating problems when you're shooting video, or perhaps shorten the amount of time you can record a video for in one continuous go? I think for that, we'll just have to wait and see some real world usage scenarios, especially if you're filming in warmer places like here in Australia. So while the global shutter in the A93 is an amazing step forward for sports or action photography it's also a huge leap forward for video and it all comes down to that elimination of rolling shutter where you might find that when you're panning quickly you get straight lines appearing wobbly or if there's fast moving things coming by that straight lines kind of appear jelly like and wobbly a global shutter solves that problem because all of the data is being read out at the same time it's easy to get caught up in the moment and the hype of the launch of the a93 but if we take a step back there's one thing that no one's really talking about that I think is really important and it's that the a93 3 is setting the scene for the next decade of Sony cameras. If Sony can make a 25 megapixel global shutter camera, it can be damn sure they can make a 12 megapixel global shutter camera. They probably already have, we just don't know about it yet. Sony could use that new sensor in something like an FX3 Mark II and keep the same great dynamic range and low light performance as the existing FX3 Mark I, but with the added benefit of that global shutter. So I'm going to stick my neck out here and I'm going to make a prediction that within the next five years we're going to have a new cinema camera maybe an FX4 for example that's going to have an 8k global shutter sensor that's also going to be great in low light and also have great dynamic range even as good as the FX3 Mark 1 that we've got at the minute and to find out if I'm going to be right or wrong feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications what do you think the next Sony camera will be that's going to feature this global shutter technology let me know in the comments I'm Jason Roberts and hopefully I'll see you in the next one